Your pre-med counselor never got into med school. R slash pre-med and SDN advice can be pretty toxic. And pre-meds deserve good advice. We do not want to end up in rural Arkansas for med school. Last cycle, our students earned full ride acceptances to Kaiser. They interviewed at Stanford and Harvard. They did it by ignoring awful advice. So today, I'll share five pieces of extremely common pre-med advice that are actually traps. Generic bad advice number one, the totem pole. I will always respect pre-meds until the day I die. And that's because I remember how humbling it was for everyone to ignore you. I sent a hundred emails to get one shadowing opportunity. We pre-meds are resilient, but the problem is that we get gaslit into believing that we have no value. We think, thank you so much for letting us be here. I will get out of the way and just watch. And there are many people who take advantage of that. I'm calling out the PIs that promise meaningful research. Then they have you only cleaning test tubes and shoveling rat poop. I'm looking at you, hospital volunteer programs. Your onboarding was 20 hours of mind-numbing online trainings. And then my reward was standing literally at the front door of the hospital for 50 hours just greeting people. And then I was promoted to a unit secretary where I was wiping down keyboards and transferring phone calls. No, you're not at the bottom of the totem pole. You don't have to spend 343 hours doing useless hospital volunteering like I did. You're valuable. You have passion, skills, and can work hard to make a meaningful difference. So go somewhere where you're appreciated. When you do that, you build an application around things you care about. You join people who respect for what you bring to the table. And that harmony leads to significant impact. That impact is what stands out to your dream medical schools. If you want to see what real impact looks like, look at real applications. We have eight full AMCAS applications so you know exactly what it takes to get into top medical schools. UCSF, USC, UCSD, my own UCLA application is on there. And every time we review a new application, like Sam who earned a full ride scholarship to Kaiser this cycle, we add it to the application database so you know exactly what is working right now. Over 11,400 pre-meds are part of our community and we would love it if you joined too. Click the application link in our description box below now. Generic bad advice number two, Panda Express fundraisers. Have you ever gone to a club meeting and there are 15 leaders on the executive board? Directors of publicity, treasurer, webmaster, service, historian, fundraising. These clubs may be the greatest scams in pre-med history. Like what is the difference between a fundraiser and treasurer? And why do you need a historian if your club is brand new? And the craziest thing is that the only event this club hosted with their 15 student leaders is a Panda Express fundraiser. Nope, we're not signing in the front for attendance. Nope, we're not doing 12 hours of meetings just to do one volunteer shift at the soup kitchen. Average pre-meds do average things and get average results. And on average, 60% of pre-meds don't get in anywhere. Now, if you're applying to medical school in the next year or two, you definitely don't want to be average. Our pre-med catalyst students that submit their application on time have an 83% acceptance rate. That is double the national average of 40%. And our results are because we work so closely with students. In fact, we can only take four students per month until we're full. If you'd be interested in earning full ride scholarships to Kaiser or want to interview with schools like Harvard, Mayo, Cornell, Einstein, click the application cycle advising link to book a free strategy call before all of our spots are filled up. Generic bad advice number three, snipers, not gunners. We all have that incredible pre-med who makes everything about themselves. They're 98% on the midterm. Their second research lab, even though they're just a freshman. Their clinical experience Instagram story on New Year's Eve with a hashtag dog hours. There's just no tact. You hate them. I hate them. But honestly, there is something that I do respect, and that's the ability to shut down the egos, send the email, apply to the position. Yes, they're insufferable, but part of that is them celebrating their hard work. You don't see how lonely they felt in the library on Thursday night, or how many doctors said, no, we're looking for someone with more experience. Yes, them being public about everything is really annoying, but them working hard and putting themselves out there, we all need more of that. Trying hard shouldn't be something that you're made fun of for. So don't gun in public, snipe in private. Generic bad advice number four, gap years are normal. This may be my hottest take. If you don't have 50 hours of paid clinical
clinical experience and 100 hours of research by your sophomore year, you are behind. Yes, when pre-meds follow this advice, I see a ton of them who are overwhelmed, stressed, and anxious. They feel behind because they haven't gotten the experiences that they should have by this point. More often though, I see pre-meds who feel the opposite. They're not stressed at all and they say, don't worry, the average pre-med takes two gap years. I have plenty of time. And look, while I am glad that you are not stressed, this lack of urgency just means that you're going to wander aimlessly for the next six months until that same stress comes back. Pressure and urgency isn't a bad thing. What it really is, is just responsibility. You're a smart person who knows you want to be a doctor and you know what it takes. You know you're going to have to work hard to earn it. So in my mind, work hard early, even if it means you're a little stressed. Because if you decide to take a gap year, fantastic. The key word is you get to decide. That is way better than being forced to take a gap year because you didn't take it seriously years ago and now you're not as competitive as you want to be. Generic bad advice number five. It's really not cool. When I was in college, if you went to tutoring, it meant that you were a weak student. If you joined a research lab in your freshman year, you were a tryhard. In fact, your friends clowned you for it. If you decided to sleep early before a big test instead of going out on a Thursday night, you weren't invited to the next one. I'm sick of that pre-med culture. I hate it. We are trying hard to become doctors. You will care for me and my loved one. You will be our country's future leaders in healthcare. And of course, that takes a lot of hard work. And there's a sickening reason why other students tear you down for trying hard. It's because your success reminds them of what they could have done. Your wins reminds them that they haven't won. They root for you until you're past them. Then they pull you down and label you as a tryhard. They say things like you've changed. Trying hard is cool. Don't let other people convince you otherwise. Those are five brutal pre-med lies that you must ignore. If this helped, you'll want to know the seven brutal truths that you should listen to. That video is here. See you soon.